Welcome to another very sp- special edition of Old School Scribe Podcast. Very happy to welcome uh, the great Ross Browner, uh, one of the one of the great names in Bengals history, and a veteran of that uh, probably the best team in Bengals history, those 1981 AFC champions. Uh, Ross, it's great to see. You. It's great to catch up. Hey, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just great to be here. It's an honor to be on your program and be able to talk about those wonderful, well, our wonderful Cincinnati Bengals. Well, the, honor's, the honor is all ours. Uh, the honor is all ours, Ross. Uh, we got a nice big picture of you after Super Bowl 16. And uh, you're talking to and maybe even hugging uh, Joe Montana, the 49ers quarterback who uh, came out on top that day. Uh, I was wondering if you can remember what you guys even said to each other. Two Notre Dame guys there. Uh, two, two Notre Dame, that's right. Uh, you know, me and Joe, uh, we, we really uh, went through a whole lot in, in college, you know, yeah. uh, just, just playing games and everything together, blood, sweat, and tears, practice. Uh, Joe was on the uh, scouting uh, team when, uh, when I was there in 75 because he had injured his uh, shoulder. So, right. You know, he's coming back from recovery. And, I, you know, so I saw him a lot on the scout team and just knew his talents were just, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to explode. As soon as he get a chance to start and play for Notre Dame, I knew that he was going to get his, uh, his chance one day. And uh, when that day came, I mean, Joe Montana just really uh, performed from that Purdue game that we brought him in the second half and brought us back because we were losing against Purdue that day, and we had lost both of our quarterbacks, uh, Rusty Lish and uh, Forsythe. Mm-hmm. So they both went down, and we were down to, like, third team. And that's when uh, Coach Devine asked, he says, well, who do we put in? You know, he's asking the captains, and I was one of the captains. I said, we put in Joe Montana, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, after that decision, after that, uh, we put him in, and he brought us back and won that game. I knew that we had a chance for the run of the national championship that year because of his leadership and his ability and his knowledge. And then moving on from there, we, you know, we won the uh, 77 uh, national championship against right. Texas. Right. And uh, that was a tremendous game. We beat them 34 to 10. And uh, Texas was 10 and 0, we were nine and one. Nobody thought we should have been there. And uh, we just proved that we were number one in the nation that year. And, uh, you know, being, being there and then, um, you know, this is a lot, a lot that went on and we just were tight brothers and tight alumni and, and teammates. Right. So right. Now you came, to, you came to Cincinnati, you, you came to Cincinnati after you guys won the national championship, right? That was. Uh, uh, correct. Uh, 1978. Uh-huh. Right, right. We won in 77 and 78, I was drafted by the Bengals, number one, number eight. Right. And, uh, I think Blair Bush was, uh, and there is a, a second, a second uh, first rounder, right. and he was the center from Washington, right. and Blair Bush came in with me, and uh, you know we just we just developed a team, and then in uh, '80 when we got well we went through two coaching uh, changes, right. and then um, you know we brought in Forrest Gray <laughs> from yeah. from Canada, and uh, different attitude, Vince Lombardi all the way, you know rules and regulations and you know, his training and getting us back in shape. And uh, that's when we changed our uniforms in 1980. And uh, of course, you know, everybody was looking at us because we had a different design, different look in the NFL. So we were either going to be clowns of the NFL or we were going to be uh, respected by the NFL. So we were after respect after that job. (laughs) So what made that defense go? That was a, that was a heck of a defense top, top five defense. I mean, uh, you know, with Hank Bola and uh, going to the three four, because uh, yeah. I think you came in. I think uh, I guess you were there when they went through the switch, right? They, they... Uh, correct. Uh-huh. We were four three right. uh, before uh, Hank Bola changed us to a three four and and Forrest Gregg. And uh, you know, we we we're, were not too happy about that because you know we're we're just changing up defenses right. all across the league, and mostly everybody knew you needed four linemen to go against five linemen, you know, right. <laughs> offensive linemen, right. and three against five, you know, you, somebody's always going to be double team. Right. And uh, that was my all my complaint at that time. And uh, when we started playing and, you know, we had Wilson Whitley, Eddie Edwards on the defensive line there, we, 
we developed as the web and uh, formed that. And then when we put our change of uniforms, that's when the jungle started. Right. And, uh, you know, who day. And, uh, you know, so that's when everything uh, really started happening uh, for us. You and Eddie, you and Eddie were Whitley were called the web, right? That was uh, yes. The web. Web. Uh -huh. and, and you guys uh, adjusted well. I mean, you guys adjusted. I know you didn't like it. Did you end yeah. up liking it? Oh, we end up loving it because, you know, we threw so many different schemes with it. Yeah. I didn't know a lot of schemes could come with it, but, you know, we had Roman line, line, you know, linemen coming in and out of the game. So we can keep that three look, but a fourth lineman can come in and move inside, outside and everything. And later on, it developed where Lawrence Taylor, who played with the, uh, you know, Giants, used that same formula with using a linebacker. But right. we use a, a defensive lineman. Right. And I was that defensive lineman the first year. And then after that, we used a couple of other defensive linemen. But, right. you know, my main position was right in. And that's where uh, Paul Brown said, you're going to be right in. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, there's no talking back to Paul. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and being uh, drafted, uh, Paul even told me, he said, you know, Ross, he said, if you were around in that draft, I, I knew I was going to pick you because he had watched me from high school, college, and pro. And when I went to pro, he said, hey, I didn't want to play against you, so I had to pick you. So that was just a real honor coming from him. Yeah. And, uh, and from that point on, you know, this was a great relationship uh, with the uh, Bengals and the Browns. And we, we started making some history. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like you were, it's like you were bred to play in, uh, for Paul Brown. Uh, uh, but, uh, because yeah. Warren, Ohio, right? You came out of right, right out of Warren, Ohio, right? Right out Warren, Warren, Ohio, and he was uh, Maslin. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they won so many uh, state championships at Maslin before he went to the pros, and uh, so you know, it was just a great honor that uh, uh, Coach Paul Brown had told me something when I was in the All Star game in Ohio. You know, the big Ohio game that right. we all said, and the North and South. And he uh, came in the locker room and said, hey, he said, what, what college are you going to? I said, well, yes, sir. I said, well, I'm going to Notre Dame. Yeah. He said, okay, I'm going to watch you. I said, yeah, you know, I said, okay, I, you know, Paul Brown, he's going to watch me, right, okay. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed. And uh, he did. He told me, he said, I watched you through college, and I, I, I knew you were a player. Because, you yeah. know, coming from the north, you know, northeast up there in Ohio, you know, we played ball. You know, we, yeah. we really played and. You know, I was a Northeastern Ohio lineman of the year up that way. And, um, you know, it really, it really gave me a lot of honor and respect. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say, hey, I'm so honored to play for Paul Brown and the Cincinnati Bengals. Did you do but in that picture, like you were saying, yeah. uh, with Joe and I, after that tremendous game that we played against each other, yeah. uh, you know, 20 to nothing and to come back and right say 21 to 26, we only allowed him six points in that second half. I think if um, we didn't have some turnovers in that game, yeah. it might have been a different turnout. But when I ran up to Joe, I said, Joe, we've come a long way. And now you're world champion. And uh, we met. And I tell you what, you did a wonderful job. And it's an honor to play against you. Ross, like you said, though, you guys, you got, he did not do much against you guys. I mean, uh, he yeah. did not have great stats. I think, uh, I think they ended up kicking four field goals, I think. And like you said, you gave them yep. nothing in the second half. How did you guys shut them down? Well, um, you know, we just uh, pulled, pulled ourselves together that second half and uh, just said, hey, you know, if we stop making these turnovers, then we can make some progress. Yeah. And um, I think Forrest Gregg really drilled that into us. He said, hey, you know, you guys are not playing bad. It's just that, you know, the score shows differently. So we had to just get out there and just play the way that we know how to play. And uh, so the defense pulled together and we rallied and, and we made things happen because Joe was using that West Coast offense. And you know, that's a two or three steps and the ball's out your hand. So it's really hard to sack a quarterback that is on time like that. Mm -hmm. And his receivers were right on time with their cuts and everything because they knew Joe and uh, where he's gonna place the ball. And that's real important if you got to a general like a uh, quarterback like Joe Montana can put it there. And, uh, you know, that's what was happening to us a lot too. Did it help you that you went at, you know, that you went against the West coast offense every day in practice uh, with Kenny running the thing? Did it? Yes. Yes. It, it really helped out and really, uh, 
you know, set us up. You know, we weren't we weren't playing bad. Mm -hmm. It was just that, you know, we had turnovers. We had about three turnovers that first half. And I think they stopped us about two, two or three times at the goal line. Yeah. And uh, that just really did not help out our efforts because you had to put points on the board in order to win in uh, anything. And, uh, you know, in the second half, we were able to put the points up, but the, the clock beat us. Yeah. You had that great, uh, you talk about the web. You also had really great linebackers, Reggie Williams, most prolific oh, Bengal oh, linebacker. Oh, Reggie, yeah. I mean, uh, oh man, unbelievable. You know, number 57 on my side, he was a right, right uh, linebacker. Right. And Reggie and I, we, we did a lot of calls that we used to do together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and Jim LeClaire in the middle, yeah. I think we had Cameron. Right. Cameron was there and uh, was it Bo? Bo out there. Um, let's see, uh, who else we had out on the other end? I think it was, um, oh gosh, was it Leopold? No. You had uh, some great corners too. I mean, you know, yeah, great. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Ken, Ken Riley. Oh, <laughs> Ken and, and Riley and Breeden and, uh, and Lewis Breeden. And, uh, you know, we, we just really had some great defensive backs that could cover, you know. Yeah, and right. once we went on that one and one coverage, you know, it helped, helped us out with uh, keeping those uh, receivers from getting open for Joe too. Yeah, right, right. The, uh, is there any one game, you know, besides the Super Bowl? Obviously, that was big. I, I remember Kenny Anderson saying he knew it was big when he saw Diana Ross singing a national anthem. Oh, yeah. Uh, Diana. Ooh. <laughs> that was a – I mean, obviously, the uh, – it was the first – I believe it was the first indoor Super Bowl. How was the atmosphere? What was the atmosphere like? Oh, man. I tell you what. It's nothing like the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got cameras flashing. You got cameras, uh, you know, uh, I mean – People watching all over the world, watching this game. And then the fans, uh, tremendous bingo fans that showed up and really supported us. And, you know, it just, it just was a wonderful crowd. Um, I think everybody enjoyed the game because it was very challenging. And it was uh, entertaining. At the same time, it was a good push for, uh, you know, the world championship. So, you know, it was really a great, 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 great uh, experience. You, do you remember uh, what, uh, I guess, besides the freezer bowl, is there any other game uh, before the Super Bowl that sticks out from that season for you? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I, I know it was the freezer, uh, the freezer bowl, but, you know, uh, San Diego, where we played San Diego for the uh, championship, the AFC championship in order to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And uh, we had that, ooh, that was, you know, that was the freezer bowl. Yeah. And um, before that, you know, we, we really, uh, you know, felt felt really good once we had that bye week, and then we got into the title, uh, the, you know, the wild card and all that type of thing, what they're running through right now. And, right. Um, you know, but during that season, I think really what showed us that we could possibly be the champs was because we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers twice. <laughs> and that's, hey, Jeff, that, that, and that's the thing, you know, that's, that's telling you what kind of team you have. Right. If you can beat, uh, in our conference was the Houston Oilers and, uh, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers and definitely the Browns. So if we can get out of the conference that type of way, then we knew we had a chance. You guys clinched the, if I'm not mistaken, you guys clinched the division in Pittsburgh. Oh, yes. Yes. No. Correct. Right. Uh, how, how, how much of a factor was uh, was Forrest for that season, Ross? How much does you know did he leave his imprint on that team? And uh, trem tremendous factor. Um, you know, he brought the leadership, he brought the coaching, and he brought the direction. And uh, and really, uh, you know, he brought that Green Bay Packers style of uh, Vince Lombardi, which mm -hmm. uh, you know I've always honored and won the Vince Lombardi Award. So you know, I was I was underneath that that type of realm with him too, because he had played for such a wonderful and great coach. Yeah. Um, but he brought that with his ethics. I mean, he really said, hey, in order for us to be a team, we have to play united. We have to love each other. And, you know, we have to play for each other. And I think that's one thing that really draw the team all together. And then he said, you got to play hard. You know, every, every play, every down, every inch, you know, we have to work for. So he showed us how to work for what we wanted to get. See, the freezer poll couldn't have been too bad for a guy from uh, Northeast Ohio. That, uh, uh, well, that couldn't well, have been too bad, I, was it? 
<laughs> hey, Jeff, hey, I, you know, I was living in Atlanta on the off season. So, you know, <laughs> I got this Southern blood in me too. And, uh, you know, hey, it was cold. I tell you what, you know, one thing we got some good advice to us from our doctors and, and our trainers to put Vaseline on all uh, skin exposed areas. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's your ears and yeah. your face and your eyes, your mouth, everything had to be greased down with uh, Vaseline. And um, and then we had our, our diver gloves on you know, in order to put our hands on the ground because it was so cold. Yeah. We had diver gloves to put on. And then we didn't put on anything like, uh, you know, the extra uh, uh, thermal wear. You right. know, we just put on normal thermal wear so we can move around and stay quick. And when we showed our arms and everything, and, uh, you know, of course, San Diego thought we were crazy. They said, oh, these guys are crazy. Don't they know it's cold out here? He yeah. said, hey, after the game, you know, it's, it's going to be after the game, but we got to play this game right now. So we had to be fast, quick, and we knew they had a, a dynamic uh, type of passing game because we played them before. Yeah. And we played them on their turf, and, you know, we that's the most – points scored in a Monday night game, I think, <laughs> still yeah, to this right. day. Right. Uh, but, you know, hey, uh, we knew that uh, his receivers are great, and Fouts was like an uh, unbelievable quarterback. Yeah. He could throw that ball, so we had to put the pressure on. Right. You know, what's amazing is 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 how well uh, Kenny threw it and Fouts didn't. It's, a, it's amazing how, uh, I mean, he just, I, I remember talking to Anthony about this, how when you saw Kenny throw, it was just like it was like a regular day almost. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's because we were practicing that uh-huh. every every day, right. and that made us accustomed to it. So you know, when you when you practice in something, uh, you know, you really get used to the elements and how to play in those elements. And you know, that's one thing about football. You know, you had to play in all the elements that you're uh, confronted with and still be able to play your game. You know, was the web able? You know, were you able to uh, dig in and uh, rush, or what was that tough to do because of the because of the turf? Well, one, one thing about it, you know, we, we did dig in and we, we got pressure and we got, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, well, one thing about it, we wanted to dominate the line and that's what we did. Um, we just really went after them, went after them strong and, um, you know, we just kept pushing them and kept pushing them and, and the whole game, you know, we just never gave up that we, we can control that line of scrimmage. Yeah. The amazing thing, we talked about this the other day, Ross, it's just uh you are, you've got, and this, this is probably unheard of in pro football history, is you got three brothers that played in the league. You're one of four brothers that played in the league. You got a nephew that played in the league, and you got a yeah. son who and you got a son who played in the league. Yes. That's that's, uh, that's quite that's amazing. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm 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 just so honored and so proud that you know my brothers followed me right. and uh, you know, and then my son followed me. And then, of course, you know, the nephews. Right. I think uh, we have some younger ones that are trying to play right now. So they're the young, they're, but they're trying to play the, the game of football. And, uh, but you know, one thing about it, it was just good to see that, you know, uh, being a leader, you know, you always like to see that you're doing the right things for your family. And uh, right. just proven that, you know, everybody paid attention and, uh, and they wanted to do the same thing. So I was really honored by that. What was it? What was it like growing up in that house with uh, four guys? Four guys and ended up playing. I mean, you know, it's uh... yeah. We had six six brothers, um, yeah. and uh, you know, all six of us played all the sports, yeah. uh, and uh, also picked up you know uh, karate. Uh, three of my brothers played uh, did really well in karate, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I was the only boxer. <laughs> okay. yeah. So you know, but we we had this my. Uh, my mother and father bought this lot on the side of the house yeah. and we cleared it. And that's where we played all our games with the neighborhood uh, uh, brothers and sisters that come in, you know, even the girls played with us, you know, yeah. we played football, baseball, kickball. I mean, any kind of ball you could think of. Yeah. We played in that, that corner lot. And so uh, what did your, what, so what your dad do for a living, Ross? What did your dad do for a living? Well, my dad worked in a steel mill. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, Republic Steel, and it was one of the biggest uh, steel mills in the city. So that's what he, uh, he worked night turn mostly. Mm-hmm. And um, so he got a, a lot of chances just to listen to the game on the radio. Right. And uh, so, you know, I was really excited about that. And, you know, when I got to 
I when I decided on what college I wanted to go to, I wanted to make sure he was going to be able to see me on TV. So that's the reason why I chose Notre Dame mm -hmm. because they're on TV on Sundays with uh, Lindsey Nelson okay. every Sunday. And that's where I, I really got introduced to Notre Dame football uh, oh. every Sunday. So I just said, well, I know they're going to be on TV and I know the family will be watching it every Sunday. Yeah. So, yeah, I said, well, yeah, I, I just have to pick a, a team that's going to be on TV more. And, that, and they were on TV more than anybody else at that time. Yeah. So, well, that's the reason why I chose Notre Dame. And, and your brother followed you, right? Joey followed you. Um, right? well, well, Joey went to USC. Oh, he did? Okay, all right. Sorry. Yeah, and Keith, that was, those are my younger three. And uh -huh. Keith Downer, he went to uh, USC. But Jimmy, who was right underneath me, he came uh, to uh, Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And then Woolard, Woolard, my brother, uh, right underneath Jimmy. Uh, so we had three brothers at Notre Dame at one time. Mm -hmm. And then when we got to the pros, Jim was with me with uh, Cincinnati right. this first year. Yeah. And the first and only year they played in, uh, in the NFL, and it was the Cincinnati Bengals. Was it a lot of competition with you guys uh, when you were growing up? I mean, was it, uh, or what was that? Or did you just, did you guys? Oh, oh. Well, it wasn't competition. It was just like being proud of everything that they achieved. Right. And, uh, you know, so a lot of times, you know, the older three, you know, we were playing at the same time, either football, baseball, basketball, or whatever, you know, at the same time and in track. I, I was more of a trackster too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we we ran track and we just did everything all together and we did it together as a as a family and, and as brothers. Did boxing help you as a, you know, to play football? Is, is oh, it, is oh, oh yeah. Pick it up or oh, it well, like you know, it, it, it helped me even at home <laughs> in the street. <laughs> You know, because I was the oldest boy, so yeah. I had to kind of, you know, protect my family. Yeah. And uh, so we didn't want nobody bullying us. Right. And so I, I had to learn how to box. So I learned how to box from really my uh, neighbors, my older older neighbors that were around us. And I told them I had to learn how to box. So they taught me how to box. Yeah. And I said I had to protect myself in order to protect my brothers and yeah. sisters. And yeah. Them. So it started. Did you get bullied? Did, did you get bullied when you were a kid? Well, not that much, not that yeah. much, but you know, we did have some bullies on the playground. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, you're a pretty big guy, Ross. Those guys must have had, yeah. their, had to have right. their heads examined. I, I well, well uh, there, there were some pretty good guys, uh, size guys back then, too. So, yeah. you know, you have to, yeah, hey, you gotta back up. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not no, no whip here. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, you know, I gotta stand up now, you right? Know? Right, did you, did you, uh, you remember, uh, wearing combat boots going to school? I, I, I never did, but I, uh, people, people accused me of that though, I think. <laughs> well, we wore combat boots, so you had to watch out for the feet too. So hands and feet uh, was uh, one of those type of things where you had to really protect yourself back then. Did you ever, did you ever uh, fight matches? Did you have, did, did you ever have boxing matches? Did you ever do anything? Oh yeah, well, at Notre Dame, uh, I'm the boxing champ. I'm the heavyweight boxing champ of Notre Dame in 76. Okay. And uh and then we went on to the pros in 79 and they had a boxing tournament and I won that. Okay, I, for the league? For the NFL? For the NFL, yeah. And, uh, you know, so they they find us, though, because, you know, we're not supposed to do any skiing or any right. kind of dangerous activities yeah. other than play football. So I got a find on that about, uh, you know, about 20, what was it? Five hundred dollars. Oh. So I was fine that, but they said no more. You know, so right. they told the networks that nobody could uh, do that that sport again. How, how? Who did you win? Uh, who did you beat to win the title? Uh, Jackie Jackie Slater, uh, wow. LA Rams offensive tackle. Yes. And uh, you know, Hall we, of Famer. He's a uh, Hall of Famer. Yeah, twenty years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we we're in Pompano Beach, Florida, and uh, at a very popular. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful resort there where, uh, you know, Bob Hope and Elizabeth Taylor and all of them were around and uh, betting on us. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had a lot of NFL ball players that was in that uh, that whole tournament. Yeah. And that was, what did you say, that was 79, Ross? Uh, 1979. Yes. Yeah. Did any of the celebrities come up to you and say, hey, I'm, I got my money on you? Uh, well, I had a, I had a couple of guys uh, approach me like that and told me that, hey, you, we, we got our eyes on you, so yeah. go ahead. You know, we're in the locker room and, you know, 
cooling out, you know, after some matches and all that. He said, yeah. I, I, got, I got my eyes on you. You're looking good. I yeah. said, okay, well, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Anybody that we would recognize? Any uh, celebs well, well, we would recognize? Well, I, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's a private resort, so, you know, I, I, can't, I can't dispose or <laughs> get anybody's name out. <laughs> well, who was your toughest fight? Who, who was your toughest fight? Uh, it, was, it was Jackie Slater, uh -huh, yeah. uh, championship. And I had to go against uh, Daryl Goldford, uh, who played with the Green Bay Packers, uh, A.J. Dewey, who was right. with Miami. Right. Um, and, you know, I had about, like, three – I mean, think who else was the other way? I can't remember right now, but you know, we had three and then we had the championship. Yeah. Did you use it to train? You know, would you train in the off season doing that? Cause that's. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's uh, best training uh, possible because I did it in college uh, for training and, you know, jumping rope, speed, uh, speed, uh, you know, speed, speed, you know, speed box, uh, heavy bag, all that quickness with your hands and feet. And, um, you know, it just really, really helped me out with uh, playing, playing the sport of football and, and being on a defensive line, using your hands and your feet uh, really, really played an important part. Yes. You're kind of ahead of your time, uh, Ross. I mean, a lot of guys do that now. I mean, that was, uh, but I bet a lot of guys weren't doing that back then. Right, right. Um, you know, but, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like, you know, after I won that, you know, they, they had talked, remember Too Tall? Right. Paul Jones, he, he right. went into professional boxing and they wanted to see if we can get a match down in New Orleans. Uh -huh. And that's when the Domingo stepped in and said, no, we can't, we can't do any more boxing. Yeah. Said, yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul I, I won't box anymore. Okay. Yeah. Can't <laughs> so, imagine Paul would have yeah. been keen on that. Oh, oh well, hey, he, he didn't want nobody to be injured or hurt. Right. You know, yeah. he, right. His mind's always on football. So right. you know, we, we had to make sure all our players were in shape for football. Now your son played for the, for the, for the dreaded Steelers. Right? Oh my gosh. I tell you what, I was, I was just so honored when he was picked by the Steelers Yeah. and uh, for him, Rothenberg uh, going into the same year as rookies and mm -hmm. so locker side by side, they're still best friends to this day. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, he played right tackle first. And then when he played left tackle, I mean, he found his position. Right. And I think that, you know, he and uh, Rothenberg just said, hey, just protect my back, protect my back. Yeah, and that's what he did. He did. Uh, so they went to three Super Bowls. One, well, the first year they won the first Super Bowl. And then uh, when they went back, they won it again. And then they lost the yeah. third Super Bowl. And, you know, that's uh, he's been retired now and he's uh, broadcasting now in right. Phoenix, Arizona. Max Starks. He's uh, yeah. yeah, he's in Arizona. He's at he's uh, broadcasting in Arizona, right? Yes, correct. Uh -huh. right. Right. Um, yeah, he 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 um he was you know. Do you guys ever kid each other? Uh, does he ever get on you that he won a ring and you didn't? Or how, did that, how does that come up? Well, no, 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 uh, no. Uh, you know, one thing about Max, he's always uh, been very proud of me, and I've been very proud of him. And uh, even though you know, at one game, you know, we played a little trick on the audience and everything. After he got finished with a game, I went up to Pittsburgh to see. Him. And uh, he wore my jersey out of the locker room, and I wore his jersey because I was in the stands. Yeah. And everybody said, you know, the fans. I said, Oh no, oh no, <laughs> yo, we didn't trade him. He couldn't trade him that quick. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they thought he was going to the Bengals, and it just really uh, sparked sparked some of those uh, fans. And they were like, No, no. <laughs> but you know, it was just a, a real good thrill to see him uh, so successful. And, uh, you know, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, too. Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great story, you and him. I mean, you guys didn't really hook up until late in life, right? Yeah, yeah. when he turned 16. Uh, right. That's when I found out that uh, his mother uh, let me know that, you know, that was my son. Yeah. And from that point on, you know, after meeting the family, and I think he went down to the University of Georgia for a summer camp. Right. And I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. So drove over and met him and, and just, I just said, I, I was looking at a mirror. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I mean, I, and and I've talked to because I think I talked to him when he was at the combine. I think about this back when he uh, back when he came out of college, and uh, oh, okay. you know, I think we talked about this then. And it was, what was that like to uh, uh, to look at a guy? Well, first of all, you know, he's you know just finding out who he is, but then he looks just like you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and six eight, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and three hundred forty pounds. And, uh, you know, when he went to college at the University of Florida, 
you know, I, I did, you know, go down a couple of games and check him out down there with the Gators. Yeah. Uh, so I, I followed his career after that, after 16, after, you know, after being 16, I followed him through college and, and then the pros also. Yeah. yeah. Did so you give him any advice? I mean, what was the thing you wanted to give him advice about? I mean, uh... Oh, I just told him, you know, um, just be yourself and um, just go out there and just be the best football player that you can possibly be and be the best person that you can possibly be to your fans and to your, you know, your family and then plus to your city that you're playing for. Right. Out of all the teams he went to Ross. Yeah. Out of all the teams he went to, he went to the Steelers. Yes. <laughs> hey, but you know, it, uh, God, God, God has his purpose. And uh, that purpose was, you know, he put him with a wonderful organization that was, uh, on, you know, building uh, a dynasty and uh, he was part of that dynasty. And I'm so proud of it. Yes. Ross, what do you remember most about your career in Cincinnati? What sticks out? Are, are there certain teammates that stick out? Certain seasons or? Um, or? You know, the, the whole the whole uh, pro experience was just uh, a delight. Uh, something that all you know, childhood dream, you know, uh, coming true, and uh, being able to play and play for the Cincinnati fans and be in the state of Ohio still, you know, mm -hmm. it was very. Uh, very honoring because, you know, I, I really uh, thought that the Cleveland Browns might have picked me, but the Cincinnati Bengals picked me, so that was even better. Um, so, you know, but, you know, I had some wonderful friends, wonderful teammates, uh, Isaac Curtis, uh, Pete Johnson, Archie Griffin, I mean, just to name a few, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Anthony Munoz, I mean, we all just gelled together and made a team and yeah. made a brotherhood that we can always be proud of when we look back and say that we we did accomplish some some great things right there in Cincinnati. Yeah. What are you doing now, Ross? Oh, well, uh, president of the NFLPA. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm looking at pensions and benefits right. and just making sure that, you know, the NFL and, and everybody's uh, doing things for the retired players, right. uh, the former players of the league. And just to make sure that, we, you know, we have um, – you know, benefits and everything after we retire from football and to make sure that uh, we take care of our families and be, you know, be happy and yeah. be happy with our sport of football and still promote that a whole lot. Try to teach the young, uh, you know, young kids in the community and the area with football camps and uh, to make sure that our skills and our sport stays alive. Yeah. I mean, that's a big time job. I mean, that's a, you probably don't have a lot of free time. That's a big, uh, yeah. a big job for a guy that's retired. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be retired. Yeah. <laughs> but they, you know, hey, you know, one thing about it, when you try to sit down and they say, hey, come on, and you just get right back up and say, okay, let's do this. And uh, golf, golf is another thing I love to play. And uh, so, you know, I've been going to, I've been going to a lot of golf tournaments and everything. I used to produce golf tournaments down in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, where I was president of the NFL chapter down there, and we uh, had a Super Bowl. Super Bowl golf tournament, which was very successful in Atlanta. But, you know, we had an ice storm <laughs> right. down there at that time. Right. And, um, you know, it was just 1970s, uh, right? 1996. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was that uh, wonderful, uh, it was right there in Atlanta, Georgia. And we were just so honored to have uh, Olympics there. And uh, we were the NFL representative and everything down that way. Right. What, uh, Ross, what, how are you, uh, you know, what's your handicap? What are you playing? Uh, how often do you play? And, uh, oh, well, well, as, as much as I can. Yeah. And the handicap, uh, you know, I'm out there to have fun. <laughs> big hitter, so, I bet. Hey, but, big we, hitter, though, I bet. But, but, we, but we've won, I've won a couple of tournaments and everything. But, you know, I'm always with a group of good, uh, great guys uh, that we play along with the corporations. And, um, you know, so when I put in my putt or put in my drive or put in an eagle or something like that, it, it really contributes to the team. So I'm really honored about that. One last thing. Did you, when you were, uh, went into the draft, did you hope that you would stay in Ohio? Did you, did you hope the Bengals would draft you or how did you, uh, well, how did you see it? Well, you know what, Jeff, um, I think, uh, you know, Kansas City was really looking at me. You know, because they were looking for a defensive lineman. I think they went for Art Steele that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they went for Art. And I said, okay, well, who's the next in line? And I think the next in line was something like, um, 
let me see, the New York, uh, I think San Francisco, they were either going to go offense or defense. I had a couple of teams that were going offense or defense, so I didn't mm -hmm. know if they were going defense or not. Mm -hmm. And then when the Bengals came up and they said, hey, we're going defense, and I was just, I said, hey, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. And plus it was Ohio, so I was very honored. Yeah. Who gave you the call? You remember who you talked to when they uh, told you that uh, you were drafted? It was, it was so funny that, you know, I was in a, a test with economics. Uh, you know, I, I, I I graduated economics degree in arts and letter. And, uh, you know, so when I was getting out of my test, uh, one of my uh, teammates ran up to me, uh, Chris Haynes. He was a wide receiver for us. And he said, Ross, Ross, did you hear? I said, hear what? Hear what? You know, uh, I'm just coming out of class. He said, well, hurry up to your room. Hurry up to your room. You're getting a call from Cincinnati. I said, Cincinnati? I said, oh, really? Okay, well. That's so I hurried up to the room. And that's when I got on the phone with Paul Brown. And he said, we have now selected you as our number one uh, draft choice pick, and we'd like for you to come to Cincinnati tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, sir. I'll be right on that plane and be more than happy to meet you. Well, we're glad they made the call. Uh, we're glad they made the call, Ross. For, uh, I was too. Very, very happy. Well, we can't thank you enough for being on and for spending so much time and, uh, you know, reminiscing on that, uh, on that great 81 team and uh, your career in Cincinnati. We hope to talk to you again soon. Oh, well, thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate it. And happy new year. And boy, stay safe and healthy. And we'll get over this coronavirus here pretty soon. So, you know, as soon as that happens, I think we'll all be happy to see each other again. Absolutely. Uh, we look forward to Paul Brown Stadium. Thank yes. you.